Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be giving you some of my best tips and tricks to achieve the most flawless makeup. Stuff that I've learned along the way, techniques that I do every single time I do my makeup that really elevate it to the next level. So if you guys wanna learn some stuff, just keep watching. Oh my gosh, this is about to fall out of my ear. We're gonna start out with the brows. I feel like I usually come on camera with my brows already done. So I wanna show you guys what I do. I already have a full brow routine on my channel if you guys wanna check it out. But I've been using the Grande Brow and my brows have flourished. Do you see how much freaking brow hair I have? This is insane. You guys, I should show you baby pictures of what I look like when I was a baby. And I have no hair. I am full, like I'm naturally blonde, so I actually had no eyebrows and I remember my brother would make fun of me for it and I would actually cry. Like I would physically cry because I was so sad about it. Anyway, somehow, now that I've gotten older, they've gotten darker and plus using that grande brow, girl, life changer. And this is super old, years old. But once you buy this, especially the big one, you will never buy it again. Like it's gonna last you a lifetime. It's better than the brow freeze. It's better than the elf glue that's supposed to be like the Anastasia brow freeze. This will hold your brows down, okay? Um, and then I usually just use a random spoolie, but I happened to just start using my, the brow glue from NYX and I take off all the product. This is so extra, extremely extra. I take off all the product and then I go into my got to be glue. What I do is I just kind of messily lay it on there like so. I sit for just a second while I do the other brow and I really like the spoolie because it's small. You guys see how tiny it is? Okay, so I'm gonna run this through my brows, let it sit for just a second. You don't wanna let it sit for too long because the this got to be glue is going to dry. Girl, it will dry and it's gonna be extremely hard to get off. So work semi-fast and instead of pushing your brows straight up, I try to go at an angle and kind of groom them to the sides so they don't look so crazy. I did go through a brow phase when I first started doing soap brows with like actual soap where I was, they were going um, vertical, they, they were vertical on my face and I look back on pictures and I'm like, no way. Take my NYX Thick It Stick It in the shade Rich Auburn. If you guys are redheads, you guys need this brow product. I'm going to wipe off the majority of the product because I don't like my brows to be super thick. You guys already know. I don't want them to be super pigmented. I'm traumatized from how my brows used to look. So the lighter the better to me, okay? And I'm really just trying to coat my brow hairs and make them more red instead of like whatever color they were before. If you really go in with this product and stick it to your face, you will get a thicker looking brow. This is a very multi-use product. I love it, I'm obsessed with it. Just because the got to be glue is clear does not mean it's not going to show on your makeup later on. As I'm touching my brows right now, I cannot feel any dampness and that's when you know you're ready to go in with your makeup wipe. Start over the top of my brows like this and I just literally wipe off the product. And you guys can see how much more tamed this brow is than that one. A little bit of that and I go underneath my brow as well just to remove that got to be glue and especially on the corner right here too don't forget that little spot because when you go in with your foundation and concealer later the got to be glue is literally like a glue and it is going to come up in your foundation it's gonna start pilling it's gonna look nasty it's gonna look weird so um I think this has been here since the beginning of the video, but a freaking mosquito bit me on my forehead. Nothing new here. I went in with my Frankie Rose Concealer. This is in the shade Fresh. And I just underlined my brow just to give them a little bit more dimension and structure. This makes such a difference. If you guys go back literally 10 seconds to the clip where I didn't conceal the underneath of my brows versus now, you can see how much of a different makes difference it makes. It looks so clean. It looks like you just got waxed or threaded or microbladed, whatever you want to say, but I feel like this is such a crucial step. And if you guys don't have this in your makeup routine, you guys should really try it out. I know that it makes a huge difference in the overall appearance of your makeup at the finished product. The NYX Brow Lift and Snatch in the shade Caramel. You little brow hairs in the front to kind of complete the look and just a little bit right here at the arch. The thing we're gonna move into is base. And you guys know I pride myself in a base and complexion. It's, so obviously your face, your skin, it's the main part of your face. A lot of people like to focus on 
the eyes or the brows but me personally the base is the most important to me this might be a little extra but this is what i feel like you guys could do to up your base game girl so the first thing we're gonna start with is something blurring that is my biggest tip to give you guys whether you have dry skin oily skin everybody wants to look airbrushed right so this is the glow recipe strawberry bha pore smooth blur drops this is like a serum you guys saw me applying applying it earlier it's very lightweight it's not going to mess with the consistency of your foundation or products over top i love this it is a beautiful skincare primer hybrid also really enjoy the benefit professional the light and the original as well as the tarte timeless smoothing primer that is definitely more of a thick primer so if you guys have a lot of pores or um, maybe you guys have texture from acne scarring primers are made to be pressed into those areas so it fills in that little divot and the foundation can now lay over smoothly if that makes sense so instead of the foundation going into the texture of your skin the primer goes into the texture of your skin and then the foundation can lay nice and smooth over top and the next step i feel like can really up your game is spot concealing before your foundation today we're going to be using the makeup revolution irl filter finish concealer i'm using the shade c6 and i use this i'm not sure if i used it in my last tutorial but i have used it once or twice before and i really enjoy it the dofa is really interesting um it kind of smells like mac pro longwear concealer we are going to target the problem area so as you guys seen that whole time that huge pimple i have right there i always get redness around my nose now we have to conceal on top of that mosquito bite that we have and any other freckles redness whatever it may be that you guys are trying to cover freckles redness or whatever it may be that when you're initially looking in the mirror and you see problem areas and you're like oh my gosh i just need to cover this all up go in with the concealer first you want to target those areas first so that way when we move into the foundation we're not going to use a whole lot of foundation just to cover small areas like this does that make sense i'm going to take one of my favorite brushes this is the base shadow brush remember it's 301 i know that it comes in a kit but man i love this brush i use this for a lot of detailing work and to be honest if i lost this brush i would literally go buy the kit just for this brush again that's how much i love it so i like to let my concealer sit for just a little bit so that i get full opaqueness out of the concealer at this point in your makeup if you're looking at your face and you're like okay i look splotchy like you guys can see redness is peeking through but there's certain areas that have a lot of full coverage that's okay because now what we're going to move into is foundation and the foundation is gonna even everything i'm using the iconic london super smoother blurring skin tint um this is in the shade cool light and it actually is a little bit deep for me even though i am self tanned right now so we're gonna use it sparingly and i'm gonna take a foundation brush this will also change the game for you if you guys have not used foundation brushes game changer you will use less product you will get more out of your product and it'll be fuller coverage But here's something, you guys. I am obsessed with Botox forehead, okay? It's something that not everybody likes, but I love it. So if you guys like the look of Botox forehead, and it's basically just super smooth, shiny, freshly Botoxed forehead, this right here, the e.l.f., if you guys haven't bought it yet, the e.l.f. Halo Glow, this is in the shade Fair, uh, shade number one Fair. I can use it when I'm pale and when I'm tan this will give that to you so um let me show you how it works I'm you guys did you guys just see that i know you guys saw that and i don't have any like how long has it been since i got botox probably in the beginning of this year so i can make all the faces now and this is still giving botox oh stunning i'm not gonna lie everything looks beautiful i mean um tell me if I'm crazy, watch me look back on this and be like, girl, what the heck were you doing? Because I know that this is, I already know that this isn't everybody's cup of tea, but if it is your cup of tea, or maybe you want to try it, El Halo Glow on the forehead. Moving on into the under eyes. This is a step that I feel like is a small change that you make to your makeup routine, but will make a huge difference. It's starting with your concealer before your cream bronzer or vice versa. Whatever one you go more crazy with, start with the other one first so you can kind of take a step back and see how much you really need of the other so me i go crazy on the cream bronzer so i'm starting with the concealer i'm taking tart shape tape in the shade porcelain beige and i'm going to focus this on the inner part of my eye right here 
and a little bit on the outer corner. A little bit goes a long way. I love makeup, you guys. I could put it all over my face and keep caking it on, but I'm telling you with Tarte Shape Tape, be careful. We're gonna go in with a deeper shade. This is Medium Sand, and this is Tarte Shape Tape Creamy. Stunning under the eyes. It mixes so well with the original. It just makes it so that it's not as dry. We're gonna let this sit down. So when you're letting this sit, basically what you're doing is letting the opacity build up. You guys already know this. But since we have that creamy shape tape in the mixture, it's gonna help bring the hydration back to the original shape tape. So blend it out this under eye with the brush and you can see how beautiful the coverage is. I have a blank canvas. And now at this point, I'm ready to go in with my cream bronzer. You guys are constantly seeing me use Anastasia cream bronzer in the shade Amber. Love the shade, beautiful, creamy. Also love the Sahara Bronze Multi Stick from Persona. This looks extremely dark, but it blends out in the most beautiful way. I'm debating if I'm gonna use this or my RCMA one today, but I absolutely love this cream bronzer and I haven't used it in a while. And last but not least, a classic, if you guys are a makeup artist or if you're just a makeup enthusiast in general, RCMA products, you guys know about them, are extremely pigmented products. Look at that. Oh, the shine is so beautiful. This is in the shade Shinto 3. So these come individually. You can use these as foundations, highlighters, concealers, bronzers, contours, whatever you find fit. There are so many different shades. If you guys are a pro artist, they, they come in palettes with tiny, like they're tiny little squares, but they're extremely pigmented and you can just use your little spatula to dip them out. Use a mixing medium or use them by itself. But if you guys are just a regular consumer, I really highly recommend getting these for start out with this shade. If you're around my skin tone, um, a little bit lighter and maybe a little bit deeper, Shinto 3 will work for you. This is my number one most used color in my kit, so use that for what you will. Um, but yes, I love this. Formula of this is definitely more, do it's the dewiest out of all of them, but the shade of it is stunning and there's so much coverage to this, because like I said, it is made for a foundation. And I love to use a brush with cream bronzers. Oh my gosh, I haven't used this in so long. I just redid my roots, my blonde roots too, so I kind of have to be careful up there. Then we're gonna go all along the nose fully with the cream bronzer like we did in my last makeup video, the testing viral makeup hacks off of TikTok because I loved how my nose contour came out. So we're gonna do that, which is a little unconventional, but it works. So I felt like my face was looking just a little bit too brown and I need to bring back some life in it. So I love to use the Maybelline Fit Me concealers to bring back light and life to the face when things are looking maybe a little bit too tan, a little too dark, whatever the case may be, especially because I self tan, I'm always finding my perfect foundation shade on my face. So when it comes to something like this, I use my Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. It's not a super full coverage concealer, but it is light enough to where it'll make a difference in your face. So I like to go right underneath the bronzer and take the same foundation brush. So that way I have something to kind of mediate in between the two colors and push this into the skin and blend it out. And I always go around the cream bronzer here because you guys can see I put a little bit more concealer there. It's all blended together. We're gonna go in with Porcelain Beige, again from Tarte, that lightest shade that we used, and we're gonna do our nose contour. And we're gonna let that sit just for a second. So it can have a chance to layer on top of the bronzer rather than just mixing with it. Into cream blush. And lately I have been placing my blush higher up on my face, so really high up up here. And we're gonna let this sit for a second. This is Juvia's Place Blush Lily. Love using cream blush under powder blush. I feel like it lasts longer. It looks more intense. It looks better in pictures with flash. Honestly, it just makes your blush last longer. Taking my Perfusion brush that I always use for my cream blushes and I'm blending this out. I feel like initially when you first apply that Blush Lily shade, you're probably shocked like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna be not good. It's not gonna be a flattering color, but honestly, it's one of the prettiest colors that I've ever used. And I found that placing my blush higher up on my face just looks better. Okay, now that we've done our cream blush, we can move into setting the under eyes. I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder in the shade one. It's literally almost gone. And we're gonna blend out the under eyes first because again, if you go in and set your under eyes with powder without blending out the creases first, you're just gonna set the creases under your eyes. So I'm gonna take a little bit on my brush like this Set. We're gonna do like a rough set under our eyes and then we're gonna go in and really bake under our eyes. Same thing. 
for you guys i saw on tiktok somebody show the mini version of this that they sell at sephora and it is tiny like i'm talking like it is this big and i'm like girl there's no way <laughs> there's no way but i'm not gonna lie look at this powder <laughs> the powder is bomb okay if you go overkill with cream bronzer start with your concealer this is the same thing with baking if you guys tend to go a little bit crazy while you're baking your under eyes set with a, a pressed powder first like i did and then go in with your bake and i promise you will use so much less powder and airbrush this powder combination makes you i'm using the jeffree star powder but my favorite is the huda beauty powder in the shade sugar cookie oh my gosh it's so stunning and we're gonna set a little bit on our forehead so it doesn't look so crazy and on our chin we don't look greasy i don't know why i just don't like an unset chin and the middle of the forehead is just a given because although i love that botox forehead i do get a little bit oily and my oils are going to come through so i like to keep it at a minimum and we're going to go in with a lottie london exposed first just taking it on an angled brush still have the bake on my under eyes i feel like the bake kind of adds a little bit of a barrier in between the powder blush so things don't get too intense too quick so i'm just layering this exposed shade on first no i'm obsessed wild about violet from revlon one of my favorite blushes if you guys can find it buy it don't know if it's on amazon i know i bought this at walmart so i'm not sure if it's still there but girl if it is get on it the cream bronzer looks so good that i actually forgot to add powder bronzer mac mineralized skin finish in the shade gimme sun this is a cult classic if you guys know you know this leaves a stunning finish it's like a satin skin like finish on the face it is pretty warm toned and i don't want things to get orange but i do like to set my cream bronzer because I again it just lasts longer you need to set your cream bronze you need to set your cream products if you want things to last if you want things to look a little bit more natural and you don't mind a little bit of wear and tear on your makeup you do not need to set your cream products this brush I love so much Molly O'Brien Gracie M03 it's not a pencil brush and it's not a blendy brush it's like the perfect in-between brush I love 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 this brush something about little detail brushes will do it for me okay now to brighten up the under eyes literally i'm gonna take the essence brighten up powder and this is just a banana powder unfortunately they only have one shade but i'm gonna take my morphe m438 this is just a toilet brush and i'm gonna go in right on the inner corner of my eye and use this to set as well as knock up that bake that's under my eyes if that makes sense so I'm basically just using this to add a little bit more coverage and brightness, but also to take away that bake so the powder is not just sitting on top of my face. And at this point, I'll kind of just go back and forth in between all the steps that I was doing just to make sure that everything is nice and placed where I want it to be. So just to And you guys know, you know that I love a glowy blush. I'm gonna give you two options because one is extremely high-end and the other is not. So we have the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush in the, same, in the shade Pink Flush. Love this. To be honest, these give almost identical results. So do not be pressed about getting the Dior one just because it's Dior. But it is fancy and I love using it. I'm not going to lie. I just love the name. Love the way it looks. The shade in here. Um, this is the Universal the Dior Backstage Glow Palette. And I'm using the shade Blush Pink. And I kind of already put it on this side so you guys can see the difference, but this is a true pink. Like if you think of the shade, just the original shade pink, that is exactly what this shade is. It's a little bit blue toned, I would say, but I'm just gonna add this right on top to give me a liquid blush look without using liquid blush because using a shimmery blush like this on top of your powder blush is gonna give you the effect that you have last skin. It's gonna give you the effect that you used cream products all over your face but you have the longevity of the powder blush and like all the powder products underneath and that's the goal to be honest so everybody wants to look glowy of course everybody's cheeks want to look nice and plump but i'm telling you adding a glowy powder blush instead of a liquid blush game changer. is arguably one of my favorite things lips 
I love lips. Ever since getting my lips done by Jennifer, to be honest, has changed the game for me, and I'm obsessed. So we're gonna be going in with a, oh my God, with a brownie lip liner. This is probably like, what, like three shades darker than my actual lip tone. So this is the Essence 8 Hour Matte Lip Liner in the shade Cinnamon Spice, like $3. It's a beautiful shade. So I like to overline my cupid's bow and then right in the middle on the lower part of my lip. So basically the top and the bottom, I like to overline in the middle. And then on the sides, I just follow my lip line like naturally. I will fill it in right here. So that way, whatever product we're gonna be putting over top, it doesn't look like just a brown line and it looks a little bit more ombre this is a retractable liner if you like more of a crisp line you probably want to go with a pencil liner rather than an automatic one but i just like these because when i'm on the go i know that there's always product in there and it's always ready to use whereas like when i bring my sweet tea and it's not sharpened it's not gonna look good you know what i mean so that's why i love these this shade bomb really velvet liquid lipstick in the shade bare okay that's gonna give me a base. That's gonna give the longevity. I have been enjoying more pinky nudes rather than brownie or neutral nudes. So I'm going in with the shade Primrose and this is a cream lipstick from Revlon. It's a very pink color, but I feel like it just adds, it adds a little bit of something to my lips so that way I don't look so dull. It's very comparable to Kylie Coco K, which they don't sell anymore in the velvet formula. They only sell in the matte, so try this out. Okay, we clean up the edges along the outside here. It's really hard for me to talk and do that, so there was literally no point of doing that, but that also makes such a difference, the overall appearance of your makeup. Now we're gonna take a pinky gloss. This is the shade, uh, this is a high gloss from Kylie in the shade Daddy's Girl. Such a beautiful pink gloss. I'm obsessed. I love it. It has like gold sparkle in it. So pretty. And a few last finishing touches. So so I haven't done this in a long time, but it looks really beautiful and I feel like I'm gonna start doing it again. I just put a little bit of highlighter on the inner corner of my eyes. I used Fenty Beauty as lightning dust and this is Fire Crystal. So I used the Fire Crystal shade, which is so beautiful. And I just put that on the inner corner of my eyes right here to kind of brighten everything up. And I feel like it looks really pretty. Honestly, I haven't done it in so long. It looks amazing. Oh, I feel like I do this in every tutorial, definitely. But I did my little winged liner, brown winged liner. And I feel like, personally, brown looks better than black, at least on my skin tone. So if you guys are looking to try something a little bit different with your makeup, a brown liner instead of black makes the world of a difference. I feel like it's just a little softer. And what I do is I do it with powder. I took the Tartlet Spark Palette and I used the shade Power, which is this deep brown shade with an angled brush. And then I took my concealer brush that I use to carve out underneath my brows, my lips, and I went right underneath that line and swooped it out just like this. And that is what is going to give you that nice wing shape. So if you're doing your liner with an eyeshadow brush and eyeshadow and you're like girl why does this look so messy it's because you haven't cleaned up the under part i promise you so just take a little bit of concealer like the tiniest amount and clean that up underneath and it'll give you just enough contrast to make a difference but also look super nice crisp and clean that's the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys learned something i love you guys so much thank you for watching and also those curlers that i had in my hair i look like crazy the whole video i left them in for like two hours and they're supposed to be the heatless overnight curlers but i really only left it in for like two and a half hours and i feel like i'm getting somewhere remember in the last video it looks so bad well i feel like i'm actually learning something somebody on tiktok they told me they're like i think it works best on like freshly clean hair and that's exactly what i did so I feel like we're getting somewhere. We're growing here. I feel like we're going to hit 10K before I know it. And that just gets me so motivated and so excited. I love you guys so much. Thank you seriously for always being so supportive. And you guys are so nice to me. I rarely, rarely get hate comments on honestly any of my platforms. So I'm so blessed to have such a sweet, supportive community. And make sure you guys tell yourself that you love yourself in the mirror today. Do that. Make sure you guys do that because you deserve it. You guys are beautiful and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.